So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. And together we form this crazy dynamo known as the Un Unpanderers. But I think. No, sir, we don't pander. Yeah, especially not to younger viewers. If you're under 18, please get your waiver signed and come back. Yeah, go listen to some tinier podcast that doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We care. Also, if you're an employer, you cannot use this podcast against me, please. Only because it's for infotainment. <laughs> yeah, it's for fun. Uh, entertainment purposes only, I believe no, it's called. Yeah, nothing can be used against us in a court of law. Mm-hmm. So what would you say we do here again? We like to fit in the groove and just flow. Yeah, First out in let conversation. It, let it rip. A couple of old friends just going over some really interesting stuff. So why don't you tune in? Enjoy. Thanks, folks. I'm liking that beat more and more. Do you? Every time. It just nice. sinks in. I can't hear it right now, but I bet it's good. Boom, 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 boom. boom. All right. Nice. Yeah. Got any, Full circle. Uh, yeah. Cool. Got exciting. anything new and exciting and fresh? Any clarifications from last time? Oh, I have a clarification, actually. Oh, please do. I just j- jump all over it. I forgot, and then I remembered, and then I please. forgot, and I remembered again. Please do. I'm ready for a clarification. So last time, uh, the previous topic was Jack the Ripper. Mm-hmm. There was that one suspect, uh, Tumulty, who... Uh, came from America as like a, a quack, and then he had like female organs that he showed off. He had like a collection. Like I would say, like he had women, but not like had sex with them. He not had, all of them. He just had parts of them. And then he he fled, I think, to France. Seems so, like a good guy. Yeah. So this fits in with today's topic, prison, because they probably would have uh, found out that it was him with DNA evidence. Because they mm-hmm. found a scarf that was left at one of the scenes that had uh, blood and semen on it from him. Somehow mm-hmm. they they tested it like twenty years ago. So the jack off ripperologists somehow found it. So they they think it was Wait, him. Oh, the whole case wide open here. Is this it? The prob the problem was we had that a whole podcast on it. We were just joking around. You had the answer the whole time. The problem was there was no chain of custody because they found it on one of the prostitutes who had died and uh, the police chief liked the scarf so he took it, cleaned it, and gave it to his wife. <laughs> I think I did see this. Yeah, I told you this. I think and, Oh, maybe that's why. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's why. Okay. So it's like... Cool. So either way, that kind of ruins the evidence, I guess, huh? Yeah, I don't know if it's real. <laughs> who's oh, who's right, blood and... It's what police chief probably did. It. Yeah. Yeah. Police chief could have been sleeping with the dude. Yeah, but who thinks you know? You get to a murder scene, and you're just like, that would look fantastic on my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would. <laughs> I'm just gonna soup. Beautiful. A ah, little blood. Yeah, it's coming up nicely. <laughs> <laughs> you just mix a little semen in there, and it comes right off. <laughs> That's my special. Yeah, a little solution. floppy for me. Can we stiffen that bad boy? <laughs> hmm. All right, so podcast turned dark pretty quick. Didn't yeah, it? well, we start off right there. We got our warnings out of the way. We allowed to say we're allowed to say whatever we want. Yes, we are. We can say whatever the flying f bomb we want. Frig, frazzled, uh, friggin', frantabulous. Ah, <sighs> yes. Hmm. Uh, for those of you wondering, spring is in the air, like ninety degrees in Philadelphia today. Oh, you get a little sweaty. I did. Put I some did. Deodorant on. Nah, I do back sweat. Oh, mm-hmm. back sweat. Oh, really? Because I drive, so like I'm in the vehicle all the time, and I don't turn on the air, so like I yeah. get to my stops, and do all my stuff. You have that tombstone sudden... shape on the back? Mm-hmm. I think girls like it, though, secretly. Huh. Really? Are you sure? No, I'm pretty sure they don't. <laughs> but that's all right. Some days it happens. It's okay. But also, the allergies are getting to me a little bit. I feel a little verklempt, as I were to say to some of my audience members. Verklempt me, you know? I'm just trying to see. Mm-hmm. Do you think deodorant is part of? They probably don't give you deodorant in prison, do they? Yeah, I think they do. It's probably like some off-brand name, like you know, hotels buy something in bulk, like a toothpaste or a soap. Uh-huh. If I buy a deodorant in bulk, like Bic or Mitchum or whoever, and then um, if you're a good boy or one of the good ones, or you pay for it with your whatever money, you get it. It's 
probably cheap as hell. Like, I don't know, 25 cents. I don't know. Cigarette. I'm tr no, I'm actually looking. I imagine. Okay. Dial roll on deodorant. There you go. That's who won the bid. Hmm. Buck 50. Congratulations, well, they, Dial. It's actually... Oh. We'll, we'll talk about We'll get back to this one. Because hmm. there's a nuance there that I think is ridiculous. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, and we're going to leave it at that, folks. Today we're talking about Prison. prize prisons. Reprisals. <laughs> reprisals. <laughs> I'm going back to reprising. Hmm. Get off me. Is <laughs> <laughs> there a small dog at your feet? No, it was the cord. It was wrapped around my toe. And I was like, you son of a gun. All right. So you're, you're not yet going to prison. So let's do this like chronologically a little bit. So, like, what crime would, would you go to prison for, realistically, or unrealistically? Uh, it's kind of rage-related one. Mm -hmm. Road rage? Yeah, Acc possibly. Accidentally run somebody over when they're... What if, they like, you were driving behind somebody, and, like, you got an accident, and you both started going crazy, and then he jumps out of the car, and he's, like, a really small person, and you just didn't see him? Like, it's difficult. If he's, like, the buses have that, like, warning zone for kids, like, don't cross right in front of the bus saying we should have a warning zone for small people i mean if you have a, a like a jeep you probably wouldn't see a small person that's true yeah a land rover a or, jacked up ford mm -hmm. or like a more realistic my like a dog jumped out or something but that's just sad oh okay. person well, is you're just not, sad you're not going to prison <laughs> not, going to, not going to prison for the dog <laughs> for the boy for the child yeah you would small person mm -hmm. hmm. no probably some rage related incident where i um real angry and violent what about uh college do you ever streak in college no i didn't actually streak i don't think wow really yeah oh that's i got one up on you you do <laughs> yeah where'd you streak i don't even know around an apartment complex did you lose at beer pong or something you get shut out my story so uh, i was playing beer pong with my buddy who was had a uh, an ankle issue so he was on crutches and during the game he kept trying to swat the ball and those assholes hmm. kept trying to do the the double bounce off the, the yeah, board. Did it, did it, did yeah. It, yeah so he kept swatting the cups and eventually we lost we didn't get a single cup and then he and i had to to strip and streak and he was on crutches and we went opposite directions around the apartment complex and all i remember is him crutching nude? toward me yeah nude and it's just <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was anyone outside looking? Were people cheering, screaming, throwing things at you? See, the backside was just us. No one was, because, you know, but the front side, everyone naturally comes out and hmm. watches as you nakedly put on your clothes. So that would have been, yeah, I could have been arrested for outside? indecent exposure. Yeah. I've had a few run ins with the law, I believe, actually. I so did. Have uh, you been arrested? <laughs> yeah, I, I did. Uh,. One time for a noise violation of all things, just where you're playing music at a loud party, mm -hmm. but it was in a neighborhood with normies. Uh, I don't, they're not used to it. Delawareans, we'll call them. Ooh. <laughs> Delaware. Um, yeah. Capital punishment. I, uh, they knocked and they were like, "Whose party is this?" And I was drunk and whatever. I was like, "Like it's me. I'll turn it down." He's like, uh, you, "We can't. This is a second complaint." And I was like, "That's the first time I heard of it." He's like, "Come with me, please." And he. He grabbed me and he cuffed me. Oh. And he put me in the back of the uh, oh, no, the back of the cop car. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't think I'd get this far. I was like, this is bad. And I don't know if anyone's ever played the Warriors game. There's a video game that came out for the Warriors. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Remember Warriors? Come out and play. Keep going. The old movie. They remade the game. Well, in the game, which was popular at the time, and we had bought or rented or something, you can get arrested by the cops because you're in a gang. And to get out of the cuffs, you just keep, you have to synchronously press L1 and R1 on the PlayStation controller. <laughs> and I remember my other friend, Dan, was placed into the police car with me. Oh, yeah. And he kept saying, he kept saying, L, he was really drunk. Uh, <laughs> actually, this is a different time, but it still worked. He was like, L1, R1, dude. Ah, L1, R1. And he told you to get out of the cuffs by pressing L1, R1. Oh. And it was the funniest thing ever. Hold on. Okay. I was putting. For the noise violation, I was put in the car, I think alone. He wrote me a warning and looked at my ID and put me back. It was when we went to the, the big gang fight event. Someone is a friend of a friend, and he says, Oh, my God, 
so and so, your cousin, your cousin says she got raped. And he was like, yo, yo, what? And they're like, yeah, they're at this party over so and so. All these guys are messing with your cousin or something. So naturally, seven or eight of us guys all picked up the closest weapon we could find. It was, <laughs> yeah, like, it was mostly like a folding chair, a hockey stick, a hockey stick, shoe, and like a, something else really dumb, Still like a, a wooden something. And we all got in this car and we drove into this. Of course, it was a cul-de-sac. Into a cul-de-sac. <laughs> And the guy's screaming, and he comes out the door, and I don't know if I'm supposed to be fighting people, high-fiving people. I don't know. I'm not really here. I'm just here because I'm bored. That's something to do. And these two guys actually get into a fist fight in front of us, and we're like, oh! And it's like, like right away, away. Like from the, from the yeah. house? Or oh, yeah. So they must they must know each other. I don't – I just showed up. I really don't know what's going on. Our guy wins, and we're yelling, yeah, take that! And we're cheering on the guy's name. I want to say his name so bad, but I don't – I won't. And we're like, yeah, you show him, boy! And we're saying his name. We're patting him on the back. We're like, yeah. And anyway, someone had called the cops when all this is going on. So I didn't realize it. But when I was – I ended up breaking them up because our guy was winning by a lot. And I was like, come on, come on, dude. Come on, come on. Yeah, so I didn't realize this. He, anyway, he got all over my pants. So we all pile into the car. Someone says, the cops are coming. The cops are coming. We never used any of these weapons or anything. But they are clearly – all stuffed in the trunk, like eight <laughs> things. And there's clearly eight of us getting into a car. I don't know if the driver was sober. And we're trying to leave the cul-de-sac, except that so were five other cars, so we all have to wait in traffic. There's a K turn. Of course, the cop came and he's looking at all these people leaving and he knows there's a fight. So he flagged our car. And I was like, uh, shoot. And he's like, what's going on here, guys? And he's flashlighting the driver. And he's like, nothing. We're just, uh, we're just leaving. We're just hanging out. And he flashes a light on me and he points to my pants. He says, what's that? And I, oh, no. I didn't have anything, so I look, and I was like, oh, it's blood. Oh. <laughs> and I said it out loud by accident. I didn't realize what I did. And he was like, what? And he's flashing at me, and now he comes in, he's coming to my side. He's like, what, what are you talking about? It's blood? And I was like, it's not my blood. And he was like, wrong answer. And he grabbed <laughs> me and pulled me out of the car. And that's when we were in cuffs. And I, I was thrown in with my friend Dan, and that's when he was, L1, R1 will get us out. And I remember he came up to the car, and he's like, what do you guys got a, a folding chair uh two hockey sticks and he went off and he listed like eight <laughs> things and it's me and my friend dan who's drunk not you and i was just like uh we were gonna play hockey <laughs> <laughs> someone was gonna watch because yeah we were, just, said that. we were just going uh, yeah play hockey i guess it, like midnight when everybody's drinking and it was real funny because my drunk friend dan is like yelling things occasionally and i think the the cop is writing reports on us. Like he's going to let us go, but he's going to write something about our file. Mm -hmm. And I remember every time Dan said something, he went, who? Okay. Nick smart ass. And I was like, no, 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 I'm the other one. Like I was like, I was like, I was like, but I didn't You're make it this worse him. for me. You know I mean? Yeah. I was like, I didn't want to correct the officer. So yeah. <laughs> the judge is going to be reading that. that off later. If something really and, did happen. And one time, one time, this is a totally isolated incident. I was drinking with my shirt off, walking down the street, drinking Coors Lights on homecoming day. And a cop just pulled me over because I was just walking down a regular street. He's like, are you serious? And I was like, woo! <laughs> and he, he wrote me an underage ticket. Oh. And then he was writing my girlfriend at the time a ticket for the exact same thing. Or maybe she was of age. I don't know what it was. And I took the ticket. And I was like, <laughs> and I walked around behind a tree and put it on the ground and started peeing on it. And the cop was like, I can see your little boyfriend. He's peeing on a ticket. I'll hit him for indecency. And he started go rattling off. <laughs> the and she came over and he's like, leave him alone. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, so there. I did have, I did have a couple of runs. Yeah, that's a few. It. I was done. That's it. That's it. I'm done. Say indecent exposure is what you'd get. I would have. Oh my God. That would be the worst one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have stats on that one. Do you, have you seen the Nathan for you episode? Not that one. No. Nathan for you. He's always asking other people to do things, take risks. It's one of my favorite shows. Yeah. He's so pants. he decides he's – right, he's always my favorite. So <laughs> this one, he decides he learned how to pick locks, like handcuffs, as we were discussing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He says, I'm getting really good at it, and I want to do it, but I want to take a risk. So in front of a live audience of children, I will try and escape these handcuffs – as a machine that has been programmed to pull down my pants and reveal my frontal nudity <laughs> no. is on a timer of one minute. Oh. And everyone's like, what? And he's like, all these other magicians, they'll risk death being crushed, drowning in these things. And that's pretty terrible. 
but can you imagine risking being a, a, a 200 uh, counts of indecent exposure <laughs> exactly <He's> like <laughs> uh, uh, what is it when you have to go neighborhood to neighborhood and knock <laughs> he risked his um sexual predator mm-hmm. <laughs> status mm-hmm. on being able to break out of these handcuffs so anyway um i'll ruin it but they paid it took them thousands of dollars to program a machine that would, it was an arm that would really pull his pants and loosen them. And then it was like, it would grab a zipper that was on a belt and then it would um, tug them down. And then he had underwear, special underwear that had a loop on it and it would grab the underwear and slowly pull them down. <laughs> and there were all these kids here and he was handcuffed with his hands above his head. And to start the whole event, he, his attorney told him he should say something menacing. So he says, something's going to happen here tonight. And I hope, it, <laughs> I, I don't know what. <laughs> This is a direct quote. And that, uh, they said, and this uh, recognizes Nathan's uh, intent <laughs> for the <laughs> evening. So if he, if he reveals plotting. himself, he Right. So uh, I'm not going to ruin it. You have to look it up. It's called The Claw of Shame. But, you know. Claw of Shame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's a good it, it made me laugh really hard. And and that's probably the one of the worst crimes you're going to know, I think. Yeah, it has right? repercussions and the social inside stigmas. prison and outside of prison. Yeah, you get a, a rap for that, and people are not going to let that go. That's one's hanging around you. Mm. Reminds me of the Ooh. the one. This is criminal episode, criminal show. They said that one guy. Yeah, that one guy was related to somebody who was in a pedophile ring, and they had like a picture that kind of looked like him. So they pinned it on him. They put him in jail, and he was in jail for months. I think it was like four or five months. I think he lost like 50 pounds. Yeah, he lost an incredible amount of weight. Right, and he did not look healthy. And he never – did he only get like three visits from his lawyer? And he was very confused in all three because he was like, I, I didn't do anything. Like I don't know what's going on. They're like, we're trying to prepare your defense. Do you have anything better to say except I don't know? And he's like, I, but I don't – I he, wasn't anywhere. He actually I don't turned know himself you're... in too to say – you know, there, yeah. I, there's this picture uh, yeah. of me, but I there's don't understand why. There's a picture of why. me, but it's not me. And they're like, we got him. Yeah. Let's put him away, guys. Book him. Book him. <laughs> He's like, closed. I'm trying to talk like a, a gun. Yeah. Get him on the cuffs. Get him on the cuffs now. Get him. Get him. Hold him away. He's fighting. Beat him. Beat him. Did, he... <laughs> Did they say they treated him bad in prison? Because, I mean, he had that rap. Was it a pedophile ring or a video distribution something? I don't know. That's the one thing is I don't know, like, local jails I think are – I don't know if they're privately run. I think some of them are. So if you get a shitty private yeah, jail. Yeah, local ones are. So if you get a shitty private jail, then you're probably not going to get fed well. The guards are corrupt, and then you're not going to be able to get help. And then his defender, I remember he said he went through a bunch of defenders, and he had to actually like read law books to figure out if they were legit or not. Right, so he was doing all the work anyway. Yeah, yeah. And then by the end of it, like everyone had associated with, with associated him as a pedophile, and like all his friends and family and wasn't neighbors. There, there was one other a coincidence, which wasn't even a big coincidence. His ex girlfriend lived in a house adjacent to one of the houses that the. Uh, That's how they had a picture of him because he was going right. to his ex girlfriend. He just walked into his ex girlfriend's house, like or his girlfriend at the time. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, that's funny. We have a picture of you in 2008 going by the house." And he's like, "I, I don't know what house. My ex girlfriend's house." They're like, "No, not her. The, the pedophile room." Yeah, the, and he's the, like, "Yeah." I, I don't know where that is. Right next door. uh, It's two doors away. You kind of, you had to be there. So, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That was back in like, then back in the 90s when you actually had to pay uh, in checks and you couldn't auto pay. So like, his mortgage and all his bills, everything was past due. Right. He lost his job. I know that. That's for damn sure. Yeah. And for something like, I see, let me see if pedophilia is in this list. Hold on a second. Uh, how about bail for unlawful sex with underage, underage person? Carries mm-hmm. with it a one million. Oh, I said the bail bond is often set between twenty five and a hundred for illegal sexual. That's kind of low, but it can be set higher. Oh, okay, it's any, up to the court's discretion. Any act with a child under the age of ten carries a full one million bail bond. So you'd have to have. What's ten percent? Is that is it ten or one percent? Ten percent is for a bail bondsman. They okay. ensure that they're they're gonna return, so it's ten percent. So you would have to pay a bail bondsman a hundred thousand dollars to get you out of ba- out of jail, or a full million to get yourself out of jail. I think that's the way it works. Really? Yeah. 
But this is a $1 million bail bond. So I don't know. That's too much. It's got to be hundred grand to get out. But who has hundred grand sitting around to pay for nobody? Do you take a loan out? I don't even know because you don't have a job. <laughs> That's not good credit. Yeah, you yeah we're going to do job. a credit check. Um, I'm <laughs> being arrested for pedophilia. Ooh, Ooh that doesn't show up on the credit check. Yeah. That's bad. That's bad. I'm going to have to write it in. Does this? <laughs> he starts typing. I like, got cancel. Uh, cancel. I don't want to do this anymore. But, I mean, we're talking about all the bad things for prison. Let's bring up the good, good things, things in prison. Yeah. Like, how many people in America are in prison? Oh, is it around 2 million? I have 2.22 million. Oh, that's good. incarceration or prison, jail, probation? I think it's a combination. Uh, in, right? in, it is, I believe. It's any, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. I love charts and graphs. Charts and graphs. <sighs> now, that was a 2014 study, I think I have. So, I don't know if you had an mm. updated number. Hmm. Yeah, the 14th study. Let me see. We got uh, a total total adult correctional population in 2016 is around 6.5 million. But that includes probation, which is okay. a lot, 3 million. Wait, so what um what percentage of the adult population is that? Did you get a number for that? Because I had um the, of the 2.2 million in prison, mm -hmm. not maybe included people going through the process still. It's almost a full 1% of the adult population. It's 0.91. I'd say it's That's a little crazy. higher, yeah. It, it, well, right, because yours is including... Um, people who are uh, out and technically not in jail, yeah. If you're right, talking right. about people who committed a crime, it looks like total is like instantaneous. So that's like probably like 3 or 4% of the population has committed a crime and are, are currently being watched by the government. Wow. That's, insane. that's a lot of work, Gov. The other crazy stat is... Uh, Recidivism mm. is the propensity, and <laughs> I shouldn't put two words back to back. It's the uh, it's the reoccurrence of a crime. So after you've been in jail once and you get out, and you've been you've been convicted and you get out, the chance that you're going to actually go back in. Yeah, what is it? I will say these stats are 100 percent accurate. It's from uh, the Bureau of Justice Statistics. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or BJ's.gov. I love BJ's.gov. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, that's good. Yeah. The, it's ridiculous because... Of Shout the, out BJ's.gov. They have a recidivism... Recivit, recivit, damn it. Mother mm. effort. You're going back to jail. I did it right. Yeah. You're going back to jail. They have a calculator on this website for choosing uh, who... like. They have the age range, the sex, so they have everything: race, ethnicity, like the number Hold of prior. Can you do? Can you do black male eighteen or something? You can definitely do that. You can do under twenty-one black male. Can you do that right now? Uh, under twenty-one black male. How many crimes? Yeah. Under two. two. Let's see. Under yeah, two. two prior imprisonment. Yeah, one. Yeah, uh, and then uh, let's, let's just, say you get screwed. You want to know the offense? They have all the offenses here too. God damn it! There's a lot of work. You <laughs> a robbery. Um, Burglar? Something, no, something lame that like they really didn't do. But let's say like like it's like drug shady circumstance. Drug like, possession. Sure. Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Because I okay, I gotta come up. And they're they're time served for the previous offense. One year, two years. I don't know. Let's do uh yeah, let's do uh just under one year. Okay. Let's see if this is in line. Uh, too small to yield reliable recidivism estimates. Hmm. I'll give you the whole stat though. Okay. I did it for the whole group of, of men. So if you've been in jail once, the mm -hmm. chance that you'll get rearrested for something is 78%. Percent. Holy. That's a, like... On a scale, wait, 1 to 100? Yeah, out of 100%. 100%. Right. There's no way. So there's a more than half... There's a more than 50% chance you'll be arrested again. Out of the five people getting released from prison, four of them will be rearrested. That sounds wrong. It's coming from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, bjs.gov. Ridiculous number, and my advice is not to go to jail. But anyway, yes, and of those, of that hundred percent of that get that get released, huh? thirty three percent. So a third are going to go back to jail. They're going to get convicted of something. Oh wait, what was the four or five? That's being rearrested. That's being arrested and put. Oh in jail. okay, not necessarily go back waiting, to jail. Yeah, okay. waiting for okay. adjudication, which is okay. a conviction or not guilty right. or not. Okay. Right, a plea, uh, mm -hmm. a judgment. Let's talk about that. Okay, let's do it. So you got a judge, right? It mm -hmm. takes a while to get your trial. 
A judge has a Let's lot say, of trials. Hold on. Let's say you're public indecency. Does uh-huh. that go to a judge? Does that go to a jury? Where, where does the jury judge thing come in? I think before I, you I said, think... quoting Nick from the Unpanders from a previous episode. So 96% of people who are going to trial. Convictions, I believe. Yeah, of the convictions, they plead guilty. And that's a smaller. So the total number of people that actually are about to go to trial, like 80% of them are not guilty. So they waste sure. time in jail, 24 hours or however long it takes. Mm-hmm. And then the 20%, that's 96 of the 20%, they ended up just pleading. They don't even fight. Right. So there's, it's not like they said, I'm not guilty, and then we're found guilty. They all said not guilty. 96% of them said I'm guilty at mm-hmm. some point, mm-hmm. whether it's because there was over, overwhelming evidence or they had bad legal team or they figured it, I would take the plea because it's smaller than what I could get. Yeah, but they fight this. Yeah, they um decided that their sentence was going to be maybe better because they took the plea, which should be logical. Mm-hmm. You don't want to waste money on a trial and jury because the person's a mm-hmm. repeat offender and it's probably going to if jail you are, anyway. if you are guilty. And some people look the part. I'm not going to say who. True. So the four percent that do go to jury, I don't know what the conviction rates on those are, but I bet it's probably higher than fifty percent. Yeah. If not 50 50. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't know this number. 65 million people in the United States right now have a record. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder what, if I have a like record. Like traffic violations? Does that include? I don't know. Because that, that don't should know. be. That probably is part of it. I would assume the number would be higher, though. Who um, doesn't have a ticket? Traffic violation doesn't count as a record, does it? Yeah, maybe it does. I don't know, because they lumped in statistics on uh, judges uh-huh. to avoid... So, like, when a judge is seeing a trial that is not a traffic violation, that it counted towards this number. So, a normal... A, a, on the low end, a judge will see, uh, like, 300 and something trials a year. Sounds like one a okay. day. On the low end, on the high end, it's like 10 a day. So, a judge so... is just like, bam, sentence, bam, sentence, bam, sentence. In a, and they have usually a six to eight hour day, I assume. I guess so. I guess so. If you're seeing ten, that's not even a full hour for a case. Yeah, if someone's done something serious, you have yeah half an hour to <laughs> murder. Really think. It's like it's like <laughs> forty like, minutes. Like, uh, that's a life. That's life. Fifteen on, life. life. Fifteen. Here, life. You're good. You're good. Weird. Crazy. That's, uh, yeah. No, they can we like... can we for the for the viewer um, describe the difference between the kinds of prison there are? And jails and prisons and securities and high security and federal and state and blah, 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 blah. We'll, get, we'll get there in two seconds. Okay. You're gonna like one, this. You're gonna like this one. Two. Okay. So, a life sentence is when you like killed somebody and you're trading in your life for theirs, or you've traded your life for theirs. Mm-hmm. And the minimum, the like 15 to life, is like you have minimum 15 years to life. So you mm-hmm. can't be paroled, or you can do life without parole. So I looked up who has who's had the longest sentence given to them, huh? yeah. and uh, somebody named yeah. Chimoy Thipsyaso from Thailand. That sounds I know. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll vouch for him. I don't. I don't know about that one. He was sentenced to a hundred. Used to be a good guy. A hundred and forty-one thousand years in jail. Oh, he's not going to be able to parole <laughs> that dude. Oh no, it's not ridiculous. Be able to parole that. You could behavior that. That's still like. <laughs> yeah. Good behavior. 70, 70 and 70, 5? 70,000 years. 70,500. Yeah. yeah. The world's longest sentence. Corporate fraud. Um, it was a she. She defrauded more than 16,000 ties in a pyramid scheme for $200 million. This is, this is the best part. Thai law, at the time, does not allow you to serve more than 20 years in prison. So she was released after eight years. <laughs> Wait. What did she get? She got twenty years in prison. Technically, because of no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Who got? What did she get? What do you mean? What she got? That was it? She got that prison. Was it? Yeah, eight years. She got out of eight years because you can't convict somebody for more than twenty years in Th- in Thailand. Whew, listen, I think <laughs> that wrong. With Thailand, you're letting that. I would do it. I mean, two hundred million dollars for eight years. That's more mm-hmm. than money I could make in eight years doing anything else. Even if I was a uh, Musky Boy or Billy, Billy, Billy Giddy Yates, the Yates. Hmm. hmm. I want to go back to Musky Boy. I'm really trying to figure out what you were. Oh. Like a 
Well, he smells good? No, Elon. Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't think he makes that much in a, the first oh, eight Elon. years. I'm sorry. Oof. Elon Musk. I was like Musk. a musky boy. I, I like, should have just said Elon Musk. I would have I would have went with that. Hmm. Uh, the old Musk family. All right. Hold on. If you're really that rich, can you even have friends? I thought about this today, actually. So the amount of Did people you? that would be going after you if you had a billion dollars and everyone knew it. No, like more than a billion, like a billion billions almost. What's his exact number? How many people would sell themselves for for less? He's got to have like $10 billion at least. Sure. So then, hold on. Can you ever have a barbecue with your neighbors? Like, but, like who do you invite? Do you meet new people? That's why I said Bill Gates. He's like, like okay, he, the equal level on like, oh, like, no, he's not going to go after my money. It's like Bill Gates is like plotting to steal his money. <laughs> he's like, wait, what can so I do yeah, to get so my wait. other billions? So do you just call him up? Like, is there some directory where only rich people have rich people's numbers? And then, like, they call so. them up. They get a special cell to. phone that's just rich people in it. Rich cell phone? You try to call somebody who's poor, it's just like... Rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Hmm. I've heard stories that he he's, like, crashed at rich people's houses, like, after fits of, like, oh. trying to figure out... Yeah, he pretty much, like, uh. tries to figure out how to do something impossible and like he can't figure it out so he just like gets frustrated and crashes it his, his latest tweet something about making a dragon I try the, you you're talking about the the rocket no he said the word dragon i think dragon i think yeah i thought he was making some kind of something dragon sure. i mean he could have been drunk making this this is like a week ago, I want to say. It was in the news. I don't know. He was on the news earlier for not taking questions about one of his companies and saying, that, oh, boring. He said the boring question, and he skipped over it. <laughs> it like, must have been the dragon company. He's probably <laughs> working on a dragon. You Are you working on boring? <laughs> I can't get into it. It's stupid. The other one from this longest sentence uh, stats hmm? was that there was a guy. There's two guys. Uh, the accomplice, he, he got 20,000 years in jail. And he appealed, and the appeal reduced his time by 500 years. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> so he got, oh my god! <laughs> and his other partner, he got like 2,000 years, and he appealed, and then they really said no, nope. and then they gave him 10,000 years and subtracted 500 off of it. We'll give him the same deal, but you still right. Got to die in jail, more. or theoretically die in jail. Yeah, if you figure out how to live forever, you can finally get out of there. What if he did? What if they what if they accidentally jailed an immortal? I mean, we have five percent of the world pop or whatever, you know, going He's, on. That'd be a crazy like we finally found all the Highlanders, like Right, and they're all in jail. <laughs> the oldest they're guy. Like, uh, the longest tenured guy to be uh incarcerated incarcerated an inmate yeah. is uh-huh. eighty six years. He spent eighty six yeah, years. He got out when he was sixty eight. No, eighty six. No, he spent 68 years. He's 86. Sorry. Dyslexic. Oh, he is 86. That would yeah. be 60. You're trying to do the math. You're like 14. Yeah. I was, well, no, <laughs> he, it was less than his age or whatever. Or less than... Yeah. I was like, that's impossible. Couldn't they put him in there for an extra... That wouldn't be a, a dyslexic problem if they put him in there for an extra year. Or let him out early. How? Who? 70 years in jail. Come on. Who puts a guy in jail for 70 years? Or mm. 20,000 years? Actually, before we get to the next segment, I'm going to tell everyone first jail ever. So it had to be what? Coming off the Mayflower? It's probably uh... Mesop- uh, Mesopotamia, baby. I'm oh, talking. You're going way back. Free. Yeah. Ah. They um primitive jails. They're pretty sure. Um, Egypt had a few. They didn't just kill them right the away. First slavery. No, I guess they were like. I guess it was the holding, more of a holding pattern. I guess. Hmm. Hey, we'll keep you in here until we decide we're going to kill you, punish you, do whatever with you, leave you, let you go. Um, another interesting one is ancient Athens. They called uh, one of their buildings a Desmoterion. It was called a place of chains. Ooh, Desmo? Is, shiver? is Desmo yeah. chains? No, I think Desmo must be place. Type in Desmoterion. He's always trying to fact check me during the episode. Because he knows <laughs> I don't. I save it. I'm just curious. Doesn't no, matter. he's trying to prove me wrong, folks. But he he didn't. He failed. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. I don't anyway. know how to spell that shit. <clears throat> the first prison with a name. 
was actually just after the ancient Athens. It was a Roman prison around 640 BC. Mm-hmm. Um, Anicus Marcius, good old good guy, good guy. Yeah, named um, a prison after. Name, name time, name name time prison. Say that three times fast. That's the uh, main time, main time, main time. Name time. Name time, main time. So wait, that's the name of the prison? Yeah, that's what he called it. I don't know. 640 BC. It's one of the first like named prisons. Hmm. So we could fast forward a little bit because those are boring. No one knows details about them. I don't yeah, know what they did in there. 1790. Right off that Mayflower. Mm-hmm. First prison in the United States. Do you know where it was? Boston? Ah, Philadelphia. Ah, oh, I was going to say it. Damn it. Walnut Street Jail. Huh. They said it was they said it was really shitty. Really? They said shitty? it was really bad. Yeah. Um to the point where no one took it seriously and I believe I think it closed pretty shortly after, but 30 years later it did inspire the biggest, the best Eastern State Penitentiary. I know that one. I drive by it. I drove by I it. You. I was like, you still drive by it? Just... <laughs> it takes me a while. Oh, yeah. Um, Eastern State Penitentiary, which is a haunted house in Philadelphia now. They, you can go in and do your thing. and ah, People will jump out. Hmm. It was actually um, designed specifically. John Havilland. You know? No, not at all. Famous architect at the time. Quaker, I believe. They wanted to make sure prisoners not just repented physically, and mentally, but spiritually. So you know what the big thing was? Lashings. Solitary. No, <laughs> the opposite. It was no communication, no contact, no physical anything. This place, I don't know if you remember Eastern State Penitentiary. It's been a while That's since you huge. drove by it. Yeah. It's a, a pinwheel. It's seven wings. So these wings, it's, they come from a center, and then there's seven branches that come out. Right? You might be able to find a, a blueprint. Eastern State Blueprint. Oh, I can't spell it fast enough. It? <laughs> I'll give you a second because it might be good for a visual aid for these folks. Oh, this does not. Eastern. I can't spell penitentiary. In fact, the name had something religious to it. Was it Puritan? I forget. I'm, I'm thinking. Wait, make I don't know. Much of the effed up. Ooh, that's a crazy picture. Okay, that's a good picture. Okay, we'll use it. Anyway, it's on these seven long tubes or branches or arms, whatever you want to call them, from the centerpiece. They said there was 250 cells. Each cell was individually heated, had its own toilet, its own running water, and its own um, door that led to the outside. Problem is, it was like a small outside area. It was very small. Everything was small. And you couldn't hear or see anyone to your left or your right. You, you can see a long hallway. I mean, I, it was to their to the best of their ability. Wasn't they made it so, right, right, right. You, they made it so that you could hear them not well. Sorry, people are screaming. I guess you could, but you're there all day. The guards barely even walked down there. Anytime you were moved from your cell, they put a hood over you. Ah, effort. That's you couldn't terrible. See your, yeah. So like, you could be either there for seven or eight years and you wouldn't like you wouldn't see more than like three people i mean they would, would feed you in nuts. It. right that's their idea was it was a spiritual um a cleansing right that was big in the time thanks benny franklin good friend of the podcast benjamin franklin check him out uh but i was reading a reddit thread about a guy who was in jail in texas for like 15 years and he said like he was moderately seen when he went in there but he saw like people that were like on edge and the moment they went into solitary which is like 23 hours a day by yourself like it was so loud in there because people would scream and yell but you had nothing to do so you'd try to waste your time they'd go insane even more insane than they were so they'd end up in a psych ward or something else because they would lose it yeah there's something weird to that the one thing i will say is that commissary which is like the the snacks and stuff you can get hmm it's sure. different. It's different when you're in solitary. You can only choose from like six snacks, hmm. which is really weird. You get punished. Go ahead. Because... Uh, do you know what the six snacks are? I'm like, I'm like curious now. Uh, hold on a second. Sorry, I'm trying to clip my nail here. You're clipping your nail? <laughs> yeah, I told you. I don't. I do them all by finger now. 
And I don't know. Once I st- once you start a nail, you gotta finish a nail. Yeah. Once it's all the way. Here you go. Here you go. Food. It's under the food category. Um, you get special housing unit. Food. Everything else is garbage. Uh, you get either chocolate bar. You get crackers. Squeeze cheese. Granola. Cereal. Vanilla wafers. There's a little more than six. Potato chips. Oatmeal. Licorice or peanut butter. They're not terrible. I would totally. Peanut butter, granola bar. Combine them. Hell yeah. Okay, so that wouldn't be so bad. But That's what I'm saying. These things, uh, so if you go in there without having any money and you're working. Yeah, how do you. Mm-hmm. If you're working in prison, how much do you think they pay you per hour? Uh, 23 cents to $1.15. That's actually pretty accurate, yeah. I got 50 the, cents to like a No, I got the number in California. That was a 2014 California number. Oh, my numbers are 50 cents to $1.50. Well, thank God, your state must have been higher than California. So hold on, let's re-emphasis for the podcast because we are arguing. There, there's a max a per day. 15. Yeah, yeah, a dollar fifteen per hour. Oh, that's per hour. I'm sorry. But like per day, the max is like four dollars. Oh my God. So all right, so for the podcast, everyone, what we're saying. Sorry, we were trying to beat each other with facts. Yeah. Think of this. Literally, a prisoner could work for 8 to 10 to 12 to 19 hours. They wouldn't work for 19 hours, I'm just saying, even no. if they did. No. They make either 23 cents an hour, 50 cents an hour, or at max, I'd in like all dollar, the states in the United States, ish. a dollar fifty ish Yeah. So, prison labor sounds pretty awesome, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're not doing anything at all. The problem no, is... No, 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 you're... The prison laborers can work hard. They don't usually, but they can. I'm saying if you're a company, uh, you can use them for your own work. I'm going to say one thing. So the snacks that I listed, most of them are around a dollar fifty or two dollars. Mm-hmm. So when you're in solitary, you're not working, so you're spending the equivalent of probably a half a day's worth of wages on just a snack. Wait, they won't give you food otherwise? They'll give you food, but... Oh, wait a second. I have uh So, yeah, well, what's the, what's the deal? So, I'm in solitary. I beat you up because I heard you were a pedo or you exposed yourself or something. Uh-huh, and I was uh-huh. like, Gang I was fight. You got to... Beat up on Pandered. I did it. Yep. I want to show everyone I'm going to shiv you. You're going to get shivved. They shove me right in the hole. Right in, right in the, the hole. kidney. Boom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right in the hole. Pound it. And uh, so, so, I'm, so I'm in the hole <laughs> for two days, let's say. Uh-huh. What happens... Besides nothing, they do have to give me food. How many times? Once? Twice? Does so, anyone know? So I have pictures of food. You get you get food three times a day. You get a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner. Okay. And then That's you get to cool. choose a snack. I'm going to show the pictures of the food because I, I thought this was awesome. Uh, let me see. Uh, there we go. So this is a standard meal. You probably want to look mm. at the live feed here, Nick. Sorry. God. Damn it. I'm going to go through it. So, like, this is actually a good meal. They nope. give you, like, a little canned fruit, some juice, a little coffee. Little cereal looks like a Captain Crunch kind of deal, and then like gravy and biscuits oh, and butter. That's pretty good. That's a good. good... I like the fruit. I like the fruit cups. Yeah, the yeah, fruit up there. That's cute. That's cool. Wait, yeah. what's the thing at the bottom right? That's gravy and biscuits. Yeah, country gravy and biscuits. Okay, go ahead, keep going. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got uh, another one, which is actually a decent meal. It kind of makes me look hungry. Like cake, you get cake, cornbread, a vitamin beverage. I don't know what the hell that is. And then make... meat fried rice, a cup of beans. I mean, I could I could make do, you know, I, if I was hungry, yeah. Sure, day one, day one. Sure. All those. Um, but they get worse as you go. Uh, they get shittier. You get, like, one thing that bothered me, like, one thing, like, if you're in prison, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that would get to you. Oh, I'll see the dinner. Uh, that one's weird. Yeah, like t- like butter on just plain, plain bread with no toast. No, the one on the eggs. left. I was going a cup of. Cream of wheat. I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't think cool. I've ever had cream of wheat. It gets much worse, though. If you go down to, like, the shitty prisons, I'm just, you get that. Like, That's a good prison, right? Okay. You get a slice of bread. You get. Oh, I'm, like, ten seconds behind you, so. Yeah, okay. chicken livers, meat patties, or hot dogs, and then beans. Like, mm. this, is, this, is, this is a meal. You get, on That's those, 58 the sh- cents, though. Wait, what's 58 cents? It cost me? The cost, the cost of, of No, it's the cost of the prison spends. It's what... Oh wow, prison! Don't waste too much money on our prisoners. Yeah, you get oatmeal, bread, and then half an <laughs> egg or less. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's a bologna, egg. maybe. That's extra. I have a half an egg. That's awesome. 
That's good. That's crazy stuff. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that, worst of all, like, if I was at that prison, which prison is this? Morgan County, Alabama. From the Marshall Bama. Project. Shout out to uh, the marshallproject.org for out. giving us these Bama. pictures. On their website. But it's amazing that that's the shit. Like, you'd get half an egg as a meal in prison. Yeah, like, who, who gives you half an egg? Like, an egg can't cost more than 25 cents. So interesting um two things we can touch on before we get to the the other main point that'll probably wrap us up mm-hmm. prison i burped saying you like that that's how i cover up my burps yeah. from now on i forgot to say that like half the people in there are in there for violent crimes so i have less than half be prepared well, it's got like 40 percent maybe this was in the 2017 june article 66% of prisoners are locked up for nonviolent crime. Mm, I'll take It could be it could be wrong, but I'm what I'm saying, I don't know. Incarcerated or imprisoned? Of prisoners locked up. <laughs> Wait. So yeah, in prison. I guess so. But the stats Wait, I have and, for... and hold on, and the also there's a there's always a caveat. Um this is locked up for nonviolent crimes. You could be locked up for marijuana, but once you get in jail, you can beat up eight people. You can get back out and murder someone. You can, do you know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot of ways to skew the statistics. Also, can we real quick for the audience just tell the difference between all the jails? Prisons? Go ahead. Go ahead. You got it. No, I actually don't. Oh, so <laughs> the lowest form of prison, jail, anything. The minimum doesn't have a detention. gate around it, technically. Right. Juvenile detention is also for people under 18. Mm-hmm. Do they get expunged or how's that work? They say your record goes away when you turn 18 if you're if you youth, but I, that sounds like I bullshit. think your use against you record. I think it follows you regardless. Then you got minimum security sentencing, which is like you said no gate, whatever. It's like, hey, yeah. just don't leave. You're going to get big, big damn trouble. Can I, can I pause you? Yeah, go ahead. Please. So this, this is a, a side a segue, uh, tangent. So like the, the other version of that is like quarantine. So back... Mm-hmm. Early in like the 1800s, there used to be leprosy, a lot of it, and there's yeah. one leper colony that they would technically say, say you, you can go here, you have to live out your days with leprosy, and you Was can't go anywhere. Was this a show or a movie? Carville, uh, Louisiana. This is on This Is Criminal, I think. I think yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool. I did hear this. Okay, cool. I was making sure. I was like, I think I know this, but go ahead. So you could technically leave. It was like the minimum security prison where they try to help you. They just don't want you infecting other people. You're a danger to other people. If you, leper. Yeah, if you did try to leave, they would incarcerate you for 30 days somewhere. <laughs> so you're technically in jail, but not really. For life, yeah. but, but without rules. Yeah, so that would be fit like right in the minimum security you know, you're you're free to come and go, kind of. Not really. We'll arrest you anyway if you. Try you're free, to leave. but if you try and leave, we'll arrest you. So I'm free. Yeah, go ahead. Just don't leave. We'll arrest you. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. Tell us if you leave because we'll stop you. There's medium security prison, high security prison, military grade security prisons, and well, ADX, I ruined maybe. it by saying prison. Um, prison is a long term type thing. Mm-hmm. Jail is a short term type thing. Before you get uh, sentenced or not. Correct. Depending if you're they, guilty. Jail is more of a holding thing or a moving thing. Like, hey, you're going to jail real quick. Mm-hmm. Hey, you're going to jail for the drunk tank. Drunk tank is a jail. Um, indecent exposure until we prove otherwise, that's jail. If you're sentenced to 44 years and you got to do X amount of time, you go to prison. Prison is a long term thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. That's a good way to remember it. It's weird you said like 40 years. There was that one guy that was convicted, and 40 years later they found out he was innocent, so he got released. That happens all the time now with DNA testing and all that. Uh-huh. And they said that, uh, so there's three different stats here. There's eyewitnesses. Are, so people that were convicted because of an eyewitness and got overturned by DNA, 70% of those eyewitnesses are wrong. Holy shit, that's way over half. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ter- terrible. It's awesome that the fact is out. That Anyway, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. We'll like, go over it's this. awesome. I mean, it's awesome. It sucks. I'm going to plug it because uh, it has to do with memory, and we're going to talk about memory in the future. It's coming Are up. we? 
Mm-hmm. Just us. Us and an extra person from uh, Neuron oh, Air. Oh, another podcast. Oh, yeah, we're going to merge them. Is this a podcast event? Yeah, I think it's a big one. Hold on. When is it? i got to put it on my calendar real quick. Yeah. Well, I don't know when it'll be released. but uh, Next podcast in a couple weeks? Yeah, a couple weeks. Like and couple then episodes? the release is about uh, two okay. months after that, I think. Because we got a we got a backlog. Big backlog. Oh, okay, okay. Big. That makes sense. I'm just marking my calendar, folks, because I want to see... Yeah. A podcast on podcast crime. I want to see these baby. two beefy podcasts jump on this one. Right. <laughs> just, I just see a <laughs> bunch of. Yeah. I want to see a bunch of information. See words off. flying and brains exploding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. So that was the one stat: is that seventy percent of eyewitnesses were wrong on those DNA overturns. Um, the other one was that. Uh, so if you go to jail. They'll charge you money per day for room and board. What? <laughs> They'll charge you, you $50 a that? day. Yeah, they can do that. So when you get out of jail, if you've been there for a year, they can charge you like eighteen grand in some states for being in prison for a year. <laughs> Pretty awful. <laughs> that's Wait, garbage. even if you're wrongly convicted? Well, that's the thing. Is There was a guy who was in jail for 40 years who got <laughs> out and then right. sued. He won a million dollars for 40 <laughs> years in jail. Mm-mm. Which is oh Rudy yeah awesome guy. awesome, frick everyone. That works I'm out. Starting to s- root, I'm starting to root against jails and yeah. prisons in general. It sounds like a bad idea in the United States anyway. Well, I don't think it in general is because what's the idea of jail in a prison in general? Rehabilitate. These places don't rehabilitate. Is it? Hold on. Is what's the number one goal? Keep I think it's actually streets. safety of the general public. Correct. Yeah, I mean, if it's two percent, you're saving the other ninety-eight percent, right? Sure, that makes sense. Keep the dangerous people away from the safe people. Mm-hmm. We'll say in quotes. Sure. Number two is uh, rehabilitate, I guess. Right? Is that number two? I don't even know. Sure, I guess. I mean, the one thing I would love is to go for trial, have the judge just railing on me, saying how ridiculous I was, like I knew, <laughs> never. Never put up with it ever again. Call me up you're and just shit. say, "Shit, you're a shit, yeah. shit. You're a shit licker. You're a lick shit." I want to talk to this defendant right now. And he like you walk up to the bench. <laughs> you're like, "Oh God, oh no." And What's he gonna say? He's, "Hey, hey, I'm an umper. I'm an umper. Just take it." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got you. Don't worry. It's this like is for show. Get out. It says get out of jail free card but it's in yeah. his handwriting you're like is this legit can we do this i oh, sent you to 30 years and you're just like i got a card he's like you're right you're he's off like, he's like, damn he's good he's good i can't wait this is the next podcast um <laughs> checking on the number but i was gonna say that that guy that was in jail for 40 years and got one million dollars how much mm-hmm. do you think that equates to per day that they paid him for his life for 40 years of his life i actually don't know what is that did you do that 66 dollars oh and then they countersued him for the time that it cost them. So they countersued for fifty dollars a day. What? So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if that stood. That probably did not stand. It can't because he didn't want them to care for him. But there they was a forced care. The ridiculous part is they use that against people. So like if you're if you're a difficult inmate, they use that rule against you to say we're going to countersue you for you know a, a year at twenty k a year. And that's how much you'll have to pay if you lose the the suit. That's ridiculous. Um, real quick shout out though. So, if I can get a prisoner to count out my beans or uh, fold towels or put a bunch of things in a bag or uh, Money. stamp, what's the old thing? Stamp uh, license plates. License plates. Is that a popular job still? Or I don't know. I don't know if that exists. So it's probably automated. That's the Probably. one. That's the one thing the guy in jail said uh, is that there you have, to, you have to have a job in order for it to seem like you're being rehabilitated, that you're trying, and there's no jobs because honestly, what jobs can you do? So people are just like what? pretending to have jobs, or like cups are sitting by the uh, the food trays, and there's a guy handing them to you instead of just like having to pick them up. Like that's a job. He'll give you your tray. Here's your tray, sir. Hmm. It's like those people that are in bathrooms when you're taking a piss and you turn around. Right, like, right, the towel guy. I, yeah. Can I give you this towel? The we'll, greeter, the greeter. Well, um... I kind of want to take the towel and just put it on the, the rung well, next to him. There are people who, um, will dig up roadways, um, use shovels, do physical manual labor. and Build they do pyramids, it for, yeah. 
I believe, a dollar fifteen an hour, right? Yeah, somewhere around there. Four hours pretty, a day. Pretty, pretty good rate. Uh-huh. Um, this segment of our podcast will be a quick shout out to like 25, 30 big everyday companies that actually use prison labor every day. Oh, yeah, let's hear it. Ready for it? Prison labor daily. Now that I'll start with like Wendy's. Everyone's like, what's their source? Who's their source? I got this is serious stuff here. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Trust me. You can look anywhere to find this. There's many of these lists. I know Wendy's because I read the article that had to do with their tomatoes. It's Mm. not everything Wendy's does, they don't package their burgers, but they get their tomatoes through slave labor, essentially. I call it slave labor, it's prison labor. Because they only got to pay these people $1.15. If they don't do it, guess what? You're in the hole. Guess what? You're getting a worse sentence. Guess what? You're screwed. So they pick tomatoes for them, essentially? Yeah, it is a, it's a Mexico thing. They, it's a Mexican prison thing. Huh. And they don't have to pay... Um, yeah, you can look it up. There's a whole big article on it. It's like pretty screwed up. It's like, whoa. Huh. Which is funny because you think Wendy's isn't bad, right? They're like not frozen beef. Do Wendy's tomatoes prisoner. Oh, yeah. You're going to see a whole article, dude. You can give me some deets. I don't know. All right. Anyway. Keep going. I'm trying to find oh, okay. one that doesn't look... No, no, no. Go ahead. Right, it's fine. It doesn't look shady like it's an official website. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. So as of March 2017, the article I read, um, these are the... So one year ago. One year ago. Uh, these are the major brands that you use in your everyday life that would rather pay a dollar fifteen to a prisoner because they don't want to pay someone like eighteen dollars an hour, like an adult. They don't want to support America. They'd rather just get free labor, essentially. Hmm. And these are good people. We the unpanders support these groups entirely and their use of slave labor and keeping people in prison. So shout out Whole Foods, good group, McDonald's. <laughs> Walmart, Victoria's Secret, AT and T, BP, Bank of America, Bayer. If I'm having a heart attack, how do the banks use them? Are they I the don't know. Call I, didn't, centers? I didn't have the whole article. Yeah, maybe <laughs> they're standing know. by that prison phone. It could just be something as stupid as um, like they break ground somewhere. Like if you got a new Bank of America, they dig. They're creating electricity by like spinning giant Cranking. <laughs> cranks. <laughs> Put it. Quick shout out them, Bayer. If I'm having a heart attack, and I think I do, I grab Bayer, even though they use slave labor. Hmm. Um, Caterpillar, uh, Chevron, Chrysler, Costco, <laughs> Costco. I thought they were good guys. John Deere, good guys. Exxon, good guys. Glaxo, Smith, Klein, never heard of them. Chemical. Company. Merck. Mm-hmm. I know they're huge. <laughs> Merck, never heard of them. Microsoft, never huh. heard of them. Sofa. Pepsi, Kmart, Johnson and Johnson. All those babies in the commercials, prisoners. <laughs> Motorola, Procter and Gamer, Pfizer, UPS, Starbucks, Verizon, Wendy's, Quaker Oats. <gasps> you guys, Quaker Oats. Come on. Allstate, Sprint, Mary Kay Corporation. Come on, Mary Kay. I thought Mary Kay and Ashley were different, but apparently they're not. Do list of uh, companies that use prison labor. Oh, you can find them all, baby. And again, it might be for something. Uh, I'll I'll pump my brakes. There's things like they probably get tax write-offs for using prisoners. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe. I'm try. I'm just shocked by how many companies. Oh, everybody. Well, think about it. Even if you only use them five times for little stupid jobs, you can write it down as you use prisoners. See, it's a double-edged sword. There's also how many companies will not hire prisoners. Now, these companies I just listed can say they hire prisoners. So it's really like good these guys. prisoners are like forcing out the American farmer because they're forced oh, to. Oh, Or the American farmer's making money off of them. No, I, I, um, I don't believe you pay the American farmer and the prisoner. I think you just cut out the American farmer. Yeah, you don't need those guys. Right. <laughs> so what I will say is, is it interesting to think that maybe – in a capitalist society, you send more and more people to prison, sector more and more prison labor that you only have to pay a dollar fifteen an hour for, and keep more and more of them in prison. You make both bullshit reasons like smoking weed to send them to jail. I don't know. I mean, that is cheap labor, isn't it? 
That's the one thing the the jailbird said that if you're in solitary for that long, you're just pleading to do something, something to keep your mind busy. So you're just Digging. going crazy trying to say, you know, I want to pump oil. I want to dig up right. props. Give me something Tell to them do. Tell be paid. Shout out, you guys. You guys are good guys. I want more of that commissary. <laughs> Give me some of that sweet, sweet commissary. And if you're a big company, are you like, ah, we can hire another guy for $18 an hour. Or a guy for a dollar fifteen an hour. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> Crazy. He certainly isn't running away. <laughs> He's got an ankle bracelet and everything. It's I'm be, just saying. It's up, but I don't know. It's going to be a problem in the robot revolution. I kind of hope so, but robots do it for free, don't they? I mean, oil, electricity. I don't know. It's going to drive down the prison wages. It's going to be. It's going to be a riot. <laughs> <laughs> um, last but not least I will touch on some positive notes because those are pretty negative things to yeah. say yeah I'm saddened by that no you were down right there shout out Seattle you know what Seattle's doing right now as a state as a city having a whole lot of homeless people uh, that's so because it's so nice hmm. yeah. no they're um they're looking into decriminalizing marijuana, which they already kind of have, yeah. but just making sure future reference, and retroactively decriminalizing marijuana. Releasing everyone that's so already anyone, in prison. Exactly, for a marijuana charge. That's pretty... So pretty as long as it's not a violent, they're willing to whatever, which is cool. I think it's a way to go. I mean, if the stuff's legal now, it's like... Ah, uh, marijuana is legal now. You can sell it. Blah blah blah. It's like a dude in jail for like eighteen years who like lost his family and whatever. And he's like, "But I sold marijuana." And they're like, "I'm really sorry. It was illegal a year ago." Hmm. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? He's doing the same thing, but now he's in jail for eighteen years. Right? Yeah, that's the one thing I was curious about with the drugs in jail. Nope, they're still in jail. No, but people Seattle... they still get drugs though. So like, uh, you... how? how? Corrupt guards. They need money too. <sighs> Derailed you? Um, no, no, no. You're leading to my next point. Perfect. There's a DA in Philadelphia who's making waves. We want to give a shout out to Larry Krasner. Hmm. Shout out, Larry. What's Larry he, doing um, these days? He's a district attorney, and just as of a month or two ago, he came before a lot of conferences and a lot of people and did a meeting and everything. And he said, um, he gave a memo to everyone on his staff, everyone he employed, everyone who works with him. Don't prosecute any marijuana charges, no matter how much they'll pay for it. Just don't even prosecute it. It's a joke. Hmm. So that's interesting. It raised a few eyebrows. Like, you're district attorney. You're supposed to prosecute crime. And he said he refused to, and anyone in his under his study, don't do it. So you just release them from jail or hold them indefinitely? No, no, no. It, this is future cases. Okay. He will never prosecute a marijuana charge. That's kind of awesome. Right. Good job. So, shout out Larry. But that Larry didn't stop there. He went before everyone and said, um, the average cost of incarceration in Philadelphia, where I'm from, where mm -hmm. Larry's from, is 42000 a year. That kind of makes sense, yeah. Sure, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you got to keep people, feed them, guards, whatever. I don't know how they figure out. Room, board, anything. Mm -hmm. He said... That's interesting. We pay the average teacher in Philadelphia forty five thousand dollars a year. The average police <laughs> officer forty nine thousand. The average social worker exactly forty two thousand dollars a year. Yeah. And the average addiction counsel forty three thousand dollars a year. So you're trading so I'll our stand, job. So he stood before them and said, If this makes any sense at all, is it worth paying a whole extra teacher to teach hundreds of kids to keep this one individual in jail for a year? Mm -hmm. If it is, by all means, keep him. This is just strictly financial logic. He says, is it worth one extra teacher, one extra police officer to keep this guy who has a nonviolent marijuana crime in for 10 years? That's 10 years of a police officer you're cutting out. That's 10 years of a teacher. That's How about addiction counsel? Someone who could stop 12 to 15 people a year from doing heroin, maybe mm -hmm. relapsing, yeah, going to jail. Oh, but instead you'd rather keep someone in jail for a year. He says, that's interesting. 
Anyway, he's making waves in Philadelphia, and I um power to him. He makes a lot of sense. I know there's more to every side, more to every story, but we're shouting out loud. He's not feeding the machine. No, he's not. The machine seems to make a lot of money off of a dollar fifteen an hour uh, wage. So just saying. Shout out Walmart. Good job. Hey Bayer, love your aspirin. Hmm. I hope we get sponsors in like six months and they're like, <laughs> "You've just destroyed all our sponsors." Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is Bayer, and we're up. we're pulling out. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! And I hope you have a heart attack. Whoa! <laughs> You can never long, never use our products ever again. <laughs> How would you know? It's like we know. Yeah, a bear saved your life. <laughs> yeah. You go to buy a bear, and then somehow your credit card doesn't work. I have cash, and then like police police officer just slowly walks towards you with his gun. He's like about to draw it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "What are you doing there? You got bear? You got bear? You got bear aspirin? Show your hands. <laughs> Nothing. It's it's Tylenol. You're like covering the label. It's Tylenol. It's a generic. It's a generic." Yeah. Going yeah. to Gen Pop. Gen Pop. So let's talk about um, the ADX prison. The maximum security prison. That's like the max max, right? Yeah, the highest of the high. It was in okay. an article that highlighted uh, like Norway's method. So Norway actually tries to rehabilitate people. I'm going to pull up the website. And Norway looks like they have like a little Ikea, uh, uh, I don't know, an armoire, a little TV... A legitimate bathroom. Did and, the prisoners have to put it together? Uh, I guess it'd be, it'd be worthwhile. It's probably free labor. It would cost you five dollars <laughs> to put it together. So it looks like they have a fridge too. To do that? Yeah. Take well, hey, prisoners. You know, you never trust them. Their intelligence might be a little lower. And then it has like a contrast of American prisons, where it's like a steel shower and like a concrete bed. Oh. Huh. Hmm. So like. The the Norway one had like a like a dorm room feel, like a co- almost a college feel. And I've seen. Are you showing it on the? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm feed? scrolling through it. They give you real silverware and they let you play games, yeah, play darts. Yeah, yeah. It's like, huh, that's pretty awesome. They have a gym, music, hmm. meditation, and then the American ADX Florence, which is in Colorado. Literally, if you took the footprint of like a Mini Cooper or a, a Mazda Miata. You'd be living in that space for 23 hours a day. Damn, son. And you would... I mean, they have a TV in here, but everything else is metal or concrete. And you you have a little slit for, like, a four-inch window. It's crazy. that You can't... Like, you don't... You have no com, no communication to anybody, and you can't even, like... You can barely see sunlight. So, prison boils down to two things. If I were to make the old Economics 101X, it's um, what a human deserves and needs to live, right? Line one here. Mm-hmm. And what someone deserves or should be punished for for their crime. We don't know. You know what I mean? Here we got like some countries are like, hey, you can live eight meals a day. You can eat whatever the hell you want. You can watch cable TV, HBO, everything else like you guys are the king here. I know you killed eight people, but you're in prison. Just here's HBO. You know what I mean? We got the newest episodes, and these are heated seats and heated beds. <laughs> yeah. because, let the guys go. You could and then like there's it. over here where it's like, hey, uh, you were convicted of a nonviolent crime, and I know you were accidentally stuck in here, but ooh, you got into a fight with another inmate. You're in here for 10 years. Your toilets don't work. Um, it's broken glass everywhere. You sleep on concrete and the they'll never get out small. yeah and the beds are small you actually can't lay down there's spikes on the ground by the way there's spikes on the ground yeah it's like when you sleep <laughs> but it's like there's got to be a middle ground and i don't know that i know what it is but i know america's in the wrong would you say that I think so, but another part of it is that Norway isn't hunting down the people that are terrorizing the world. I don't think world. Norway was right, though, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah. It's too easy, it right. seems. Right. I think it's... Um, Norway, I was thinking, is a little too light, maybe. Soft. I don't know. We're, like, housing, like... Well, the one thing I will say is wrong is the indef- indefinite uh, without trial uh, holding. So, like, people that are held in Guantanamo, Guantanamo 
uh, that are terrorists, you're allowed to hold them indefinitely and not try them. So they're not even like... Is this the people where we um, blast Panama by um, Van Halen? Yeah, I hold them upside down, waterboard them, and all sorts of stuff. Right. Seems, seems a bit much for me, also. Because like, if they are convicted, then they go to this ADX Florence and they sit in that cage for ever, essentially. They're never going to get out. Yeah, so how about the Boston bomber? He's in there, too, I think. I know. What did he get? How many years? I have no idea. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Thank God the internet exists. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. And a sentence. Let's see what his sentence is. Uh, death sentence. Formally imposed. That's uh, rough. It doesn't say how many years. Maybe just... If you're convicted... So that's another thing I looked at, is that there's only, like, a handful of states that actually do uh, execute. It's like Florida. There are, well, here's an interesting or questionable thing. There are more states that... Um, they allow will use people the death to, penalty. Yeah. Right. It's used death penalty, but they don't actually do it. Yeah, like California. Yeah, California will accept people and say they're convicted to death. They will be executed. But never actually execute them. Yeah. Texas is different. Yeah. Podcast. Need any help, babe? What are you doing, Nick? Do you have to pause? I can talk by myself. Heard they lost. Oh, Sixers? 76ers? Lost. They're up by 24 at one point. 26. Oh, wow, they still lost. That's terrible. Yep. Well, they were only up by six or four at half point. That's where I my mood turned. But uh, hmm. Shout out my girlfriend. Um, always wanted to be on the podcast. There you are. Good job. So you got mm-hmm. 30 murder charges. Wait, wait. Mm-hmm. So wait. 30 charges, only oh. four for murder. So you get at least four life sentences. Killed. Uh, it doesn't say. So they he's don't sentenced, give him sentenced to death like by lethal injection, which is another interesting thing. Is that if you're sentenced for execution, you can technically choose what your your death will be. So what would your death be if you were sentenced? What do you, What do you mean you can choose your? You death? can choose. Uh, uh, what was it hanging? You can do. I don't. Well, some of these. Some of these. Pick hanging them? No. <laughs> they, Hold on. There were people hanged in 2016. I'll tell you that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awful. Hey, hold on. This is another question. It's morbid and crazy, but can I find the footage online? Huh. Or is they not video? <laughs> I don't think they. I was really curious. I have no idea. They had to tape it. I don't think right? so. I won't. Well, I, I guess they, they have proof, right? It. You'd have to prove it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there. It's somewhere. You can go to some one of those shady websites and get it. Probably. I'm not saying I want to. It's more of a question of do they save that? Here's the uh, here's the here are your options. They must save that. Um, oh, I scroll down to the bottom. Okay, you can go lethal injection. Mm-hmm. Electrocution. Yeah, I've done that. Which All right. well, not to death. Oh wait, what? <laughs> These are means of execution. Lethal gas, hanging, <laughs> and firing squad and nitrogen. <laughs> wait, they still got firing squad. <laughs> they still squad? have a firing so squad. So awesome. Who gets picked for that? Hold Holy on, that's got to be a job. Yeah, you only come in, in for that one time. Someone, yeah, yeah, in case firing squad, and that's your job. That's awesome. I heard they have like a line of people, and they only give like real bullets to like two or three of them. Right, I did hear that. So no one knows who really killed them. Mm-hmm. But really, if your your gun shoots, you're pretty sure. Yeah, you could probably feel the difference. Um, there's a rumor or a, a running theme going around. You've been sentenced to death, and you will die by electricity. And they pull the thing, and you get electrocuted. If it doesn't work, or for some reason it shorts, or it didn't kill you, you're free to go. Is this true? This is along the lines of something I, I read earlier. Very Snopesian. You know, I gotta check Snopes for this. Okay. Um, so back in the olden days, they used to say, uh, if you stick your head in boiling water and you survive, then you're innocent. I did. That's that's a witch thing. Yeah. So the the priest, if he thought he was innocent, he would turn down the heat so it wouldn't be really boiling. It would just look like boiling water, and they'd stick their head in there and survive. Uh huh. So it's really not like electricity. If it's not technically all the way on, 
in I surviving. heard a catch point too, though. Yeah. That if you survived your head being submerged in boiling water, We're close chances to are you're a witch. You deserve to die. <laughs> and then they just string you up anyway. Yeah, yeah, that was a thing. You didn't. You never. I heard didn't. That. Re- I didn't read that second part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no! If you survive something ridiculous like being stabbed or poisoned, he's a witch. Oh, you <laughs> live. He's a witch. He's a witch. <laughs> Stab him! Give him a So they would death. kill you anyway. Right. They, yeah, they would kill you anyway. <laughs> so if you live through this death sentence, you will be killed. Hmm. That's awful. Mm hmm. Sounds bad. So does prison. Yeah, so know. does McDonald's? McDonald's? Is that a place? Terrible. Terrible. Anyway, they usually pay their workers a dollar fifteen an hour, so that's it's pretty close. It's about even about what they do anyway the only other thing we didn't talk about is uh the classic the classic uh watch your cornhole bud getting watch your cornhole bud yeah getting um did you get read any article on how much rape happens in prison i read one that that stated that it was more likely that you're gonna get raped by a guard Ooh. which is kind of crazy makes sense i guess i don't know they also included stats about um a, a humor this is, I wouldn't say this is humorous, but it's like Terrible. if you go to prison and they tell you within 24 hours that rape is wrong, then you're less likely to get raped. But if they don't tell you that rape is wrong, you're more likely to get raped. Hmm. Which cool kind of makes... guards are out there. Yeah. Telling everyone what's right and wrong. I can imagine prisoners being like, oh, so you're... Hmm. That's not what you're... Okay. That's a no-no. That's yeah. a bad one. Hmm. So in the previous podcast, which we didn't release, mm-hmm. I asked you what you would do to protect yourself from the uh, corruption and getting uh, shivved or mm-hmm. sexually interacted with in any any form. Mm-hmm. And you said you'd be a friend to all. Yeah, I would try and befriend everyone. White power, black power, Asian power. Uh, I'm missing a couple powers, but I would befriend all yeah. of them. Yeah. Axis powers, allies. Mm-hmm. I'll be allies. Mm-hmm. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Many people as I can find, I'm friend in the group. Hmm. The guards, you'd have to pay them off. I would friend the guards. They would have lost money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my defense would probably be to be disgusting or really, really resourceful. Create crazy weapons. How, how would you be disgusting? Um, so there's a scene in Oz where he pins a guy down and then he poops in his mouth. So, <laughs> not saying I would do that. I would just say, you know, borderline insanity. You do something crazy like that, who's going to really go after you? Like, you you got something wrong with you. If they come after you, they're going to get some nasty disease or something. You just tell them you got HIV. They're not going to, I don't think they're going to go after I don't think they're going to mess with you. Andy Dufresne and the sisters? Yeah, you stick this in my mouth, whatever I've got in the there. Gonna, yeah, hard. Mm-hmm. It takes a hmm. crowbar to pry it open. Oh, sweetie. Oh, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I've got HIV too, which didn't. I don't know that existed back then, but hmm. I don't think I would do it. Well, folks. Well, that's the happy don't ending. Go to prison. That's a happy ending. Don't go to prison. Don't ever be involved in prison, and don't buy from any companies that support prison. Which is impossible. You've named them all. You named all the I know, I know. I named every company that exists. <laughs> Which, um, in defense, if a company like that wanted to support us, I'd say, yeah, that company may have supported prison labor in the sense that they were supporting prisoners in general. Can you imagine if no one employed a prisoner? That would be terrible. Mm. Someone has to give these people a job. If someone has to stick their neck out for them, it's a little tiny company like Walmart. And I think it's great that they would give a prisoner a job. So Walmart is a hero, and they can write it off as a tax deduction because they're helping a prisoner. So good on them. Yeah. Hmm. Help him buy his commissary. Give him some Help uh, him buy some noodles. deodorant today. Come on. Hmm. The deodorant's like half a day's pay. So most of those guys probably don't use deodorant. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't either. It's just I logical at that point. No, at that point, you're right. Yeah. Well, thanks uh, Stinky and for checking in. If you have any prisony stuff you want to add, yeah. If you've been you to prison, if... let us know. Wait, 
prison get internet? So, the story I have is that prison has uh, devices that will interpret for you. Um, and so, like, it's a video interpreter. And the prisoners found a way to hack it to get porn on it. So, if <laughs> they're hacking a device to get porn on it, they probably don't have internet. Good point. Unless Good they're point. in Norway. Which they probably get escorts delivered to the prison or some crazy shit. That sounds... Kind of, um, I like that. Let's go to Norway. If anyone mm. wants to fund us to go to Norway to really find out what prison is like, we'll, we'll do, do it. We'll do it. For like a six-month sentence. Yeah, small sentence. We'll find the <laughs> smallest crime you can commit while getting in prison. That'd be, that'd be amazing to start off like that. Jaywalking. Yeah, yeah. Give me the week. I'll take the week. I'll take the week. The street. Yeah, yeah, the week. <laughs> Hell yeah, vacation in Norway for free. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, folks. We um, do. We certainly do. We like you so much. A lot. <laughs> Don't leave us. <laughs> we like it a lot. We really do. Thanks, gang. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for thanks for being there. 